Ma'am, thanks so much for your time. Uh, we have this conversation on the back of a, an announcement from uh, the United Nations throwing their full weight behind Casta Semenya, saying that it's not right for any woman to be discriminated in any form when it comes to the sporting fraternity. Now, as a, an arm of the United Nations, help us understand what the ECA's position is when it comes to gender parity and what you guys are doing to, to drive the movement of gender parity forward. Uh, thank you, Fifi. I think, you know, clearly, when you look at the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, you enter its doors. What is the face that you see? For the first time, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa ha has a female executive secretary. We are 60 years old, and we, for 60 years, we've never had a female executive a secretary. And that really does say a lot about the organization. And on the other hand, we put at the forefront of our work gender equality and women's rights. We... We've just had a restructuring in the, in the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. My division used to be the um, uh, Social Development Policy Division. Now it's being called Gender, Poverty, and Social Policy. Already you can see that at the forefront of the naming of the division is gender. Emphasizing the importance of gender equality and women's uh, empowerment in the organization and our programming in the division on our program on gender emphasizes one, women's economic empowerment, two, women's rights, three, women's access to factors of production. And there you are talking about access to land, access to resources, access to labor. So you can see what drives the program of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. As we speak, we are preparing for the review of the Beijing Platform for Action. And if you look at the Beijing Platform for Action, what do you find in it? For me, it's a document that over decades will continue to be relevant. Already, when the Beijing Platform for Action was being drawn, those issues of the rights of women were included. So it remains relevant to date. And we are going to be reviewing the implementation uh, for after 25 years of uh, the agreement on the Beijing Platform for Action. We're going to be reviewing it, and next year we meet in New York, and I'm hoping some of these issues, uh, women in, in, in sports, uh, women HIV and HIV AIDS, women's economic empowerment, all the different issues will be reflected on, and I hope South Africa will be able to raise some of those issues specifically, and how at a, both at a political level, at a policy level, as well as at the operations getting everything done, they are addressing these issues. And of course, this cuts across, across all the different countries on the continent. Because, I mean, uh, it's a fantastic thing that right now we're talking about uh, uh, the female uh, secretary of the ECA for the first Executive time. Secretary. Executive th secretary. Thanks so much for correcting me there. But then you, you, you look at the leadership across the continent and you still see the face of, of a, a man, in fact you see the face of, of an old uh, man and you even look within the leadership of the economic and the finance clusters which many would deem would are, are one of the most important and still it's, it's, it's a very male cabinet. How, how are your efforts to improve gender parity really being responded to by, by member countries of, of the ECA, by national governments and and, and really, uh, for me, I ask, what, what, what is holding back even more improvement of, of female leadership in key positions? You know, Fifi, we've come a long way. We've come a long way away. Who would think of having a Minister of Defense being a woman, a Minister of Finance being a woman? If you look at the figures now, we are doing pretty well. Of course, there's still a lot to be done. Let me give you an, a, a country that for me has done exceptionally well in a short time, where I think their attitudes and behavior around gender have always found very conservative Ethiopia. The Ethiopian cabinet now is 50-50 female. The Minister of Defense is a woman. Look at Zimbabwe. The Minister of Defense is a woman. Zimbabwe, the Minister of Finance is a woman. I'm just giving a few examples. Look at Rwanda, um, the women in parliament. So we are, we are doing fairly well. We could do better. We are e even beating some of the countries in the, in the developed world. Remember, when you look at, at gender, you are looking at both attitude and behavior. So there might be a political will, but on the other hand, the attitude that the head of the household is a man. And then once that is the attitude, it continues in the um, arena for decision making.
the private will remain, will also, is also public in a way. So how men feel, and some of us women, we also feel that probably uh, the person who should be in a decision-making position is a woman. But let me say with confidence, it's changing on the continent. The, the figures are showing otherwise. And I've given Ethiopia is a very good example. Rwanda is an example. South Africa is also doing fairly well. Um, so yes, we still have a long way to go, but we are doing well. I mean, to speak to the, the, the other aspects of, of your, your portfolio and how, how confident you are feeling um, within your portfolio in your ability to meet uh, some of the, 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 the goals that are being addressed here by the sustainable, the sustainable Development Goals. Mm -hmm. You know, let me just look at the, this conference we're having and the discussions that are taking place. Yesterday, if you listened to one of the presentation, our director for our training institution in Senegal, Idab, spoke about the numbers of senior policymakers that go for training. And there was a response from a member state that they are keen to see the numbers of women that policymakers. Yeah, I'm talking about senior policymakers that go for training include women. And looking at how ECA can support to ensure the inclusion of women, that is a discussion and a, 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 a deliberation where the countries responded to a presentation by one of the directors and it shows you uh, the commitment. So at ECA, one of the um, programs that we have in place is to support member states in mainstreaming gender across all the different sectoral areas that we work with. And the same is expected of the divisions in ECA when they work with the sectoral ministries to ensure that in the outputs that they deliver to the member states, gender is addressed. If you look at the Africa uh, free, um, trade continental area, one of the issues de definitely that is key is addressing gender in there. Who are the majority of the traders? They are the women, the informal traders. The majority are the women, and that drives large, large figures of trade. And within the programming that is happening at ECA, that specific division is going to look at, one, the figures, the support that you need to give to the informal trade, the in traders for them to be able to move the goods across the continent.